This looks like the Ghostbusters, the, the pedal thing that they slid on the floor under the ghost. No, you guys can't see this yet. This ain't your mom's LS. Right here, Old Dominion is dropping off the beautiful IndyCar engine. I purchased the Cosworth XD for the car, so it is the original engine for this vehicle. Who doesn't want the original engine for this? Even me, even me, I'm, it's not an LS. It's an actual piston car. We're gonna give it a good point. The official zip ties of Indy. <laughs> All right, now it's the hard stuff. Okay, you want to lift it or you want me to lift it? Uh, do it together? The park of the covenant, right? Oh my god! What a nasty engine! There are so many things going on here that I can't even wrap my brain around what this is. Look how small this is! This is yeah, the... there's, that's the, the out, outlet. <laughs> that's the outlet, yeah. All these connectors. You gotta keep that, yeah. this guy. So, this, is a, this is real real life carbon. Yeah, so this is a Cosworth XD, if you guys look that up. Fully operational, race only. This thing has some of the weirdest technology, and even nowadays it's still very relevant to what we can learn and improve on. Oh, wow. That's the injectors. Oh, it's got velocity stacks inside of it. I'm aware of basic piston engines, but... What is that? Like, what? That's like some sort of, like... Thing that made the ooze from the <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This really has a fucked capacity. Okay, boost, water. What is all of this? Oh no, this is auto body. Look how beefy this is. Whoa. They are legit ITBs. Yeah. No. That's peak performance. Come yeah. on. Oh my god. I think you guys would be okay with us having a V8 in the shop that is unlike any other V8 you've yeah, seen. The amount of wild shit, we'll go through in the video and we'll break down what everything is. And so the air scoop comes down to the turbo and then the turbo goes up into okay. the backside. You wanna know what's cool actually? That we actually got extra because we had to wait. For us, this is more valuable than almost anybody else. This is Rob's like wet dream. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if anyone knows of like auto sport connectors and stuff. But like, look at that. The guy that was gonna ship this, he does a lot of IndyCar stuff. And so he ran behind being able to get this out of the shop. And so as a, like, hey, I'm sorry, he sent us the body chassis for this car. And even if we didn't use this, which we'll, I'll certainly map it out and learn it, every single one of these connectors are at least $50 plus, And you can repin them and all that. So Dude, look, they even have the aux cord. Pull the aux cord one out right there, right, right next to that one. Yeah, yeah, aux cord right there. But we're going to have to upgrade it to lightning cable. <laughs> but yeah, this is all the type of harness wiring that I'm trying to do now. This is exactly what Rob just is doing at, yeah, at this moment. Yeah, Raycam DR25, no way. Look at the big bolt connector. That's professional. One of the most important factors about this motor Hell is that man. it is the chassis for the car. If you were to take that metal 4x4 thing out, the car will fall in half. And so there are bolts for here and four in the back. And that's what holds the rear of the car to the front of the car. That is, the engine is the chassis. XD, oh, this is number 27. That is so sick. We have an engine with a specific engine number. Uh, I was very uncomfortable buying this engine. Now I'm not. But in efforts to learn this chassis as much as I could, the guy was like, hey, this is a used but race ready engine. I'm like, well, how much is that? He said $37,000. This is a $37,000 engine used. I think that we're gonna learn a lot and that's gonna continue our engine development, but I wanna get this thing running. We don't need another four rotor project. We need an Indy car running. Then we swap the motor out because I'll build a wiring harness for the engine for both engines, the three rotor slash whatever engine possible. Much easier swap from there. And these are all the real deal connectors too. This is big boy stuff. We'll either have it where it goes into this engine or into a rotary engine. So that way the harness is the same no matter what. One sensor on the bottom, one sensor on the top. These are clearly the sensors themselves. The sensors don't get unplugged separately. This is kind of a cool idea. Instead of how we were planning on doing mil spec where the mil spec harness starts here, the mil spec harness is here. That's a cool idea where the plug is actually on the engine, you take that off. We'll continue breaking this down as we go through this video. We got a couple minutes to just stare at it and understand. Rob! Rob, did you get the Indy car running? 
No, Isaiah, that's just the Cove Commuter 2. The Cove Commuter 2 is an amazing speaker right as it is. It's got this beautiful 360 degree sound, just like the motor for this Indy car. Things get crazy when you split it into two banks. You're able to pack even more punch into a smaller amount of space. I know it's hard for you guys to watch me with a piston engine. When you have something like this, the sound of that engine coming through these speakers is heaven. The Cove Commuter 2 is also water resistant, but not only that, it has enough of a charge to last longer than an Indy car will ever last on a full tank of methanol. You can enjoy the Commuter 2 just like I used to enjoy the Commuter 1 as a single piece or split it apart. You get this beautiful surround sound feeling. It sounds like I'm driving the car. Not only is this thing split in half, but it also has little subwoofers on each side. If you're looking to buy the Commuter 2 and save a lot of money on it, over 67%, Go to coveaudio.com slash rd67. That's coveaudio.com slash rd67. That code also works on headphones. Now back to the methanol breathing machine. Oh yeah, the nicest thing in the entire shop. <laughs> That weld has no place being on mild steel like this, especially because it's gonna be on the bottom side of my piece. <laughs> I just wanna make sure my $40,000 engine doesn't fall off of this thing. Not right angle. <laughs> couldn't have been that easy. That is my wild looking structural engine hoist. Welding definitely warps them, but it double warps back into a good spot. This side on. We only hold up the four rotor with three bolts, I think. And this one we're gonna have seven. So a little overkill. These are the ones that we have to actually screw in fully. That feels pretty good. Good. This is officially the first time we have ever hooked this motor, pulled this motor, anything. We've just been steering it in this Rubbermaid container this entire time. Perfect. You gotta undo some bolts, don't you? Uh, no. It'll just pull the wood out, I think, with it. Oh, they are bolted to the bottom. Holy shit. Well, those have to come off the way. This is it. Sorry about that, that was horrifying. Oh, that's so sick, that's the whole flywheel right there. That's a uh, speed sensor or a crank angle sensor. Either one, it would be the same thing. It's a crank angle, crank angle sensor, crank position, speed of the drive shaft, output shaft. Before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's go put it up on the table next to the real monster. Real talk is that you wouldn't expect to see a V8 ever in my shop, even though I've had three LSs. <laughs> That's so horrible. I'm such a hy hypochondriac. I'm such a hypocrite. But this is something where this is a lot of people's dream engine, including mine. I mean, I love rotaries. Dr rotaries are the peak pinnacle engine, but an Indy car, an Indy car screaming methanol v8 v10 v those are all really sick but i respect the shit out of this engine so i just want you guys to know yes we all hate ls swaps here but this this ain't your mama's ls what's the four rotor doing together whoa what what, what are you doing step four rotor <laughs> <laughs> you aren't supposed to be there uh blur this out no right here no 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 blur this out no you guys can't see this yet it's already kind of a sick shot with, with the engine being pulled up in front of its body. Set her down. Set her down. Hopefully this table's strong enough. I reinforced it. It's okay. Move it or it's fine. I think it's good right there. We're going to slide it by hand. 
We'll let it sit there just to make sure the table can handle it. Bring that back up. We need to do the very first thing that we did with every other thing. It is time to weigh this up. This is a nice little behind the scenes fact. Did you know when I did the video of the LS versus the FD engines and I had the LS sit on this and it shattered into pieces, we had to hit it with a ballpoint hammer to get this damn thing to break. We dropped the LS from a foot and it would not break this thing. So we're gonna go ahead and break it now, test it. 201, okay, okay. Uh, got some man boobs to deal with. <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead and see. Okay, we are, oh geez. We're at a 270. 265. Okay, it's, it's it's coming down to 269, 270. Ignore that we're also including this stuff. So we'll say a 265 for sure. 270 total with all this shit. I'm gonna say a 265, that's without the intake. I just wanna point out, we are not putting it this way for any other reason other than Joel wanting to make a beautiful thumbnail for you guys. So it's all Joel, all for you guys. Let's take this part off and let's see what we're looking at. That whole assembly bag. A V8's nothing without its intake, especially a Cosworth. The intake on this thing is by far the most beautiful thing. And we had a chance to go through this entire engine. Actually, when my brother was last in town, he and I spent, I wanna say probably five, six hours just staring at it going, well, what if this, what's that? Even with this being from the late 90s, early 2000s technology, there's still so much to learn from hidden race technology and the top of the game many years ago. I'll argue this is that there's a top of the level back then, then the shit curve, even to now, will never exceed the back then top of the game. But this will always do better. I've realized that in my entire life is that there always is a level standard and they do kind of both fluctuate like this, but the quality and the high level stuff like this just prevails. It's very rare for somebody like me, a shade tree mechanic, to get to see this stuff or even to own this. And while some of you may look at this and go, oh my God, this is a perfect YouTube thing. We've got $100,000 in engines sitting on the table right here, arguably some of the best engines of the world. That's not how I think about this. I'm just excited to learn from this and apply it to that. And the part that we can learn is this looks like, you guys remember the Ghostbusters, the pedal thing that they slid on the floor under the ghost? That's what this thing looks like to me. And there is so much about all of this. And I think that a lot of this intake manifold setup is stuff that will transfer from here to there because it is out of this world. So if you guys come closer, I'll show you some of the coolest things that I've learned about this engine. First of all, we'll just go through the basics. This is a coolant overflow reservoir and a very beefy metal based one as well. The whole timing chain setup as well as the chain drive for both the oil pump and the alternator and the coolant pump. So all the way back in this corner is a baby alternator. You'll see all the way behind it though, just kind of going around in a circle here. This line is super confusing to me and I thought it was a coolant line. There's actually an air line. It kind of comes from the front of the engine here and goes and cools the alternator. And then the same thing with the oil pump on the other side. Where does that air come from? Right here. So both sides have that right there. So the cool part about this engine is it is a dual overhead cam, dual overhead everything, whatever. There's two valves intake, two valves exhaust, and you can actually see the wide oval shape for the two exhaust valves coming out right here. The number one thing that is resounding and what you're gonna have to work on with this engine to keep it alive is the springs, the valve springs, probably valve adjustments, valve springs. That seems to be almost a cost of several hundred dollars per hour of runtime, especially at peak performance. You just can't have an engine doing 11, 14,000 RPM and not have the valves wanna float and do all that sort of crazy shit. That's gonna be an area of concern for us. A couple other really crazy things. This is the side of the motor that is the front. So the massive amount of oil for a dry sump oil system, as well as the fuel system is all right here. And the fuel system is driven off of a quill drive right right here. So this is mechanically connected to the center of the motor and that is the oil pump right here. It actually drives through a little bendy straw. It drives the fuel pump for the methanol here. That fuel pump sends fuel to the top of the engine. This is the biggest mind blowing thing. Uh, earlier in the video, we were wondering whether or not this was a blow off valve because it's directly connected to the inside air chamber. This is the fuel pressure regulator. And you know what's so epic about the fuel pressure regulator? Other than O-rings, the entire path for fuel, for methanol, nasty methanol to travel within this engine is all through hard lines. There is not a rubber line inside of the motor. So fuel goes in, it goes through the aluminum cast out through here, goes down to an O-ring to the backside of the fuel rail, goes through the fuel rail, goes back up, goes through the casting, 
and then of course has I, I can't tell if it's a dead head or otherwise it is a returning fuel system but I can't tell if the whole engine is past or before the regulator that is why right here you can measure fuel pressure and temperature because it is right inside this part of the intake manifold same thing with boost boost is obviously lower it's in, in where the party happens but then water and oil come up from these little things right here kind of fancy weird way of doing it but that is what's connecting up here is this one's the water line and the other one's the oil line i took off a, a fitting right here this is a bitch of a fitting and i realized i was messing it up but this fitting right here that is connected right there i was trying to remove this that fitting goes all the way to the alternator so that's the power main for the car this does have 16 core injectors two injectors per cylinder will probably end up running the same we can run much larger injectors than, and qu higher quality injectors than existed at this time but the engine was allowed to run 20 fuel injectors two per cylinder and then four in a cross shape in front of the turbo i don't think we'll need that with modern turbo technology that's we're talking 1997 turbos garrett modern g series will destroy this engine i think in a good and bad way inside of here is something that has blown my mind and taught me a lot about wiring since we first got this motor and that's all the mil spec auto sport deutsch connectors the way that they do it makes a lot of sense. They have all the sensors up here. Everything is sealed end to end. So that way, when you go to take these sort of things off, you can pull technically on the wire. Let's be realistic. If some guys helping out, they can pull on the boot and that's basically like pulling here. That's wonderful. These are connected to the wiring harness that you saw for the chassis that thankfully the guy that sold me this engine included. Some of the really mind blowing things, you can hear a lot of things happening here. This is the throttle position sensor. And I really wasn't understanding too much about the throttle position until we did actually take this off. And what you'll see in here are slide throttles. And so this throttle is in, basically ITB in a sense, individual throttle bodies. And so that's completely closed off, no air going to any of those. And then it slides on ball bearings, opens to a completely wide open, undisturbed airflow path. So there is not a blade, there's not a throttle body or a butterfly valve in the way to disturb that air. That is actually probably hand carved too. Uh, this is before CNC machines really were a big thing. You see all 16 injectors here and here. Unfortunately, or fortunately, however you look at it. So you can see that we've got spare O-rings and weird shit down at the bottom. With all those, I noticed inside of here, take a look at this cylinder right here. I don't blame the shipper guy for this, but so you can see on the left side, there's one of the O-ring things inside of the valves, inside of the heads. That's not good. Definitely warranting a teardown, which will help me understand this engine. Some of the coolest things include this right here, which is the spark plugs, coil and plugs here. Throwing little baby harnesses built into that as well. And it looks like these are grounds. It's a really wild way of handling the grounding and spark plugging and all of that sort of stuff. Kind of wild how small the, these uh, wires need to be but really crazy setup. Interestingly enough, the engine is not held from the block. The engine is held from the heads. That throws me off completely. So there's a plate of some sort that comes up off of these, all these millions of holes, right where we mounted this whole thing and goes to the front of the body. And then the four holes in the back here go to the transmission mount. Speaking of going to the transmission, this is all you have for a flywheel. That is the flywheel right there. So you wonder why these things rev like a bike. Well, that's it. You probably don't even have a input shaft. Really cool to see that this thing is a numbered, you know, limited edition thing. You don't just randomly get Cosworth XDs anywhere, but this is an XD 027. So this is the 27th, not necessarily 27th one, but in their serial numbers, this is number 27. And so it's kind of neat to see that this motor probably has some sort of cool history. I am very, 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 very blown away by this, particularly the intake manifold. There's a lot more for me to learn. We're gonna have one major video per major thing on this car because the goal is to get it running the way it was meant to be, but resto modded. Like let's use the modern turbos, modern fuel systems, modern ECUs, and let's see how fast this baby car can actually go.